Can you appreciate God better in this place? Uh, I mean, I know it's cold and chilly, but you can do better than that, celebrating Jesus, uh, the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings in Jesus' name. Amen. You may also celebrate praise and worship. Amen. Amen. You may have your seat in the presence of God. Uh, I'm glad that you all came tonight to hear the word of the Lord and also even to call unto his name. In Jesus' name. Um, every time we are gathered, I believe that the Lord does not uh, disappoint. And he has never gathered us in vain. And he's not going to start tonight. Um, there is a scripture that I want us to read in the book of Second Chronicles. Second Chronicles. Um, chapter number 15. Chapter number 15. And um, we're going to read from verse 1 through to verse 7. From verse 1 uh, through to verse 7. And uh, there are some things that we are going to gather there. And let me just give you the title of uh, the message tonight before we start reading. Uh, I have titled tonight's message, The God That Responds the God that responds. And the Bible says, beginning from verse 1, And the Spirit of the Lord came upon Azariah, the son of Obed, and he went out to meet Asa, and said unto him, Hear ye me, Asa, and uh, all Judah and Benjamin. The Lord is with you, while you, are with, uh, you be with him. And uh, if you seek him, he will be found of you. But if you forsake him, he will also forsake you. For uh, now, for a long season, Israel had uh, been without true God and without a teaching priest and without law. But when they, in their trouble, did turn unto the Lord God of Israel and sought him, he was found of them. And in those times, there was no peace. To him that went out, nor to him that came in, but great vexation were upon all the inhab uh, inhabitants of the country, and nation uh, was destroyed of nation and city of city, for God did vex them with the all adversity. Be ye strong, therefore, and let not your hands be weak. For your work shall be rewarded. As I have mentioned, that I have titled this message, The God That uh, Responds. And I mentioned that deliberately before I read the text, because uh, there are some few verses there that are self explanatory. And I didn't realize, Pastor Presence, you are here. Eh? Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't realize you are here. Amen. You're going to say hello later. Uh, but, but thank you. Thank you for coming. Um, there are some few lines there that are self-explanatory. And uh, I said it's important for us to realize that uh, there are so many kinds of God, but there is only one God that responds. There is only one God that responds. Actually, these are the gods, it has been proven that uh, they are sinking sun, and the singer of the song said. They are there, yes, they are made by human beings, and some of them do not respond. One case example is in the book of uh, First uh, Kings chapter number 18. You remember the encounter between Elijah and the prophets of Baal? And uh, he gave them the opportunity, the first opportunity, because he said, until... Now he was addressing the Israelites because um, Ahab, through Jezebel, had introduced the worship of Baal in Israel. And uh, the Israelites were torn between the lines between which God to worship. 
because the god of Baal or the gods of Baal were worshipped through intimidations and threats and blackmail and all that. Uh, sorry for using those words because they've been used before. Because the king Ahab and the queen Jezebel were subscribing to those gods. Because Jezebel was a foreign queen, she had been married from a foreign nation and she had transported the gods of that nation to the nation of Israel. And you realize the God that is worshipped by the queen must be worshipped by others by force, not willingly. And therefore, Elijah asked, because he was the only one that was not willing to worship this God, and his life was in danger, as I have told you, that uh, everyone had to worship this by force. And uh, as he was running, one time he is appearing with a challenge and he is asking the Israelites, for how long will you be torn between two lines? For how long will you be undecided? If it is Baal, then worship Baal. If it is Jehovah God, then worship Jehovah God. But uh, he put a contest so that they can prove which one is the God that responds. And he gave the first opportunity to the prophets of Baal to put up an altar and uh, to call on their God to bring fire. And they attempted to do so for the longest time throughout the day. They tried. They called louder. And uh, Elijah was mocking them. Perhaps your God is traveling. Or he is busy. Or he is sleeping. Call him louder. So that he can respond. But he never responded. But the God of Elijah, who is the true God, Jehovah God, when he was invited, he responded. And he responded with fire in that particular case. So we serve the God that uh, responds. You remember also in the days of uh, the Israelites when the, the, the Ark of the Covenant had been taken uh, by the Philistines and uh, they took it uh, before they are gods and uh, one of the gods was called Dagon you remember he was found to be bowing before the ark of the covenant that represented the presence of God and they, they, they stood him up and uh, they, they left him but the following day they found him not only bowing but also having lost his head and his arms because he could not withstand the God that responds. Our God responds. Now look at a neighbor, even though it's cold, tell them that our God responds. I can't hear you. Tell them our God responds. The kind of God that we worship is the kind of God that responds. Now here we are finding that uh, the Spirit of the Lord being upon this uh, man called Azariah the son of Obed, coming to the king of Judah called Asa. You may call him Asher if you prefer, but uh, he is Asa. And uh, he said unto him, what has been happening in the kingdom of Judah? And he is saying, the Lord is with you while you are with him. So this is proof enough that our God responds according to our actions. He does not just respond to anything. No. He will not just respond any time. But he responds according to our actions. He is telling this king that the Lord is with you as long as or while you are with him and he continues to tell him that if you seek him he will be found but if you forsake him he will also forsake you he will respond in tandem with your actions how you behave determines how God will respond and you remember last Sunday I was talking about judgment, the Lord's judgment. And I said, it's important for us to know that God cannot just judge 
anyone, anyway, anyhow, before he observes how they are behaving, their actions, what they are doing. In fact, for the Israelites, they had been warned so many times by Isaiah and other prophets to change their ways so that God can pardon them and withdraw his anger from them. But they did not listen. So when he is responding, they should not complain. And equally for us, when God is responding, according to our actions, we should not complain. This prophet is saying that the Lord is with you as long as you are with him. Now look at your neighbor and tell them, the Lord is with you as long as you are, as long as you are with him. So, you determine whether you want the Lord to be with you or not. You are the determining factor. And that's a lot of power that we have. That's a lot of power that we have. Because if you have the power to determine how God responds, then you should know if he has abandoned you, it is because you have abandoned him. Because here, he has been told, if you seek him, he will be found. He will be found. But if you forsake him, he will also forsake you. And many times we have cried unto the Lord and say, that, Oh Lord, you have abandoned me, you have forsaken me, you have forgotten me, you have neglected me, I have been seeking your face, I have been crying unto you, and I have not seen you, you know, responding to me. But many times don't we realize that the day that we abandon the Lord is the day he abandoned us. The day we turned away from him is the day that he turned away from us. The day we were no longer seeking him but seeking other things is the day he was no longer available to us. Because he is saying, if you seek me, then I'll be found. I'll be found. And you know, many times, God is waiting for you to act first. There are things that he has determined that must happen. And they must happen anyway. They must happen anyway. But, as far as your relationship, our relationship with him is concerned, and how he is going to behave in our lives, we hold the keys. No wonder he was telling Peter that, and I will give you the keys of the kingdom so that that which you open shall be opened. That which you shut shall be shut. So that you have the keys with you either to lock God out or to let him in. Revelation chapter number 3 verse 20. The Bible says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. Whoever hears my voice and opens the door, then I will come in. So that you have the keys. Any door that you have shut, it is shut. And God is not going to fast to force himself into your territory. He's only knocking. He's only knocking. That's why if you read the book of John chapter number 10, he was talking about the relationship between the sheep and the shepherd. And uh, he was saying that it is only the thief that breaks the door or breaks the window or passes anywhere else. But the shepherd always uses the door. He uses the door. He, God will never force himself unto you. If you want to forsake him, then he's good with it. You say, you forsake me, I will also respond appropriately. You abandon me, I will respond appropriately. You fail to seek me, I will respond as much. And we keep complaining. And little don't we realize it is in accordance to our actions. Because as long as Israel stuck to the Lord, then he stuck to them. He stuck to them. And he's saying here that 
For a long season, Israel has been without true God and without a teaching priest and uh, without the law. Now, here are some few like uh, secrets of how how to maintain a good relationship with God. And number one, it's through teaching of the word of God. The Bible says in Romans, is it uh, 10, 17, that faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. So that he is telling them for a long season, Israel has been without true God. Why? Because they have been without teaching priests. People that can be able to teach them the laws and the ways of God and how they are supposed to behave before God. Now, if you, if you have never, like, uh, I've interacted with quite a number of people and uh, I've realized that uh, for you to appear before certain people, Sometimes you need some orientation or you need some tutorials. You need to be like told this is what to do and this is what not to do before them. I remember we visited someone with uh, my friends. We, we wanted some help from this uh, particular lady in, uh, at the gate. Well, uh, we were, were parking there at the gate and uh, one of these person that knew this lady before told, told me that some instruction to no, no, this person, make sure you are like two meters away. Don't shake their hands. Don't. What's wrong with all this? Why should I like keep my distance? And those times, by the way, it was, uh, we didn't know COVID. Eh? It's a long time ago. It's a long time ago. And I was wondering why. And this fella told me, that's how she behaves. First of all, she doesn't shake people's hands. Secondly, you must maintain a, a, almost like two feet or two meters distance eh? away from her. If you come any closer, then you'll be even evicted from that house. Yeah. Just, I, I was thinking, eh? just imagine that I wasn't like uh, given those instructions or, or such uh, tips. How would I have behaved? Because I would have gone normally. Yeah? You know, going and desiring to shake their hands and all that. And I would have been in trouble. And whatever we wanted from this lady, we would not have gotten. And, and, and many times, what we do not realize is that you cannot just be appearing before God anyhow, anyway. No! There are ways of appearing before God and without proper teaching and without proper, you know, preaching of the word. Then we remain ignorant. And uh, the Bible says that my people perish for lack of knowledge. In fact, uh, in Hosea, he says, now that you have declined or rejected that knowledge, I have also rejected you. They don't perish because they don't know how to go to warfare. Because they do not know how to protect themselves or to guard themselves. No. They perish for lack of knowledge. And who is going to instill them this knowledge if they are not? ready and they are not available for teaching. This is what this Azaria is saying. Because for this longest time that they have not been having the true God they have not had a teaching priest and they have been without the law. Now the law in this context was the word. The existing word then. The existing word then. So that in the absence of that then we find ourselves so far from God. So far from God. Why? Because we have rejected his law. We have rejected his teaching. And because we do not know, we are ignorant, we continue perishing. We continue perishing. But he's saying, but when in the day of trouble did turn unto the Lord. Now, he is painting even scenarios. Asa was the king of Judah and uh, certainly the way things seems, he doesn't have a good history 
of the way things have been happening in Israel. And it took these prophets to tell him what happens. You seek him, he is found. You forsake him, he is not available for you. You are close to him, he is close to you. You are far from him, he is far from you. Without teaching, you have no true God. But he's telling them, so during those times, uh, when they found themselves in trouble and turned unto God, then, and sought him, he was found of him. The time that they were in trouble and they remembered the Lord and they turned unto him, that is the time that he was found to them. And all unto us, we, if we are only waiting for the day of trouble so that we can turn unto the Lord. Because many of us are very quick to turn unto the Lord when in the day of trouble. When we find ourselves in extreme trouble and we, are, we don't know what to do, that, that's when we are turning so much unto the Lord. We want to seek Him. And, and, and by the way, this is so evident. This is so evident. The way even people do things in the kingdom of God, sometimes it's very easy to tell whether they are in trouble or not. For people that I have known for a long time, very long time, I, I have found others that, and until I don't have to be asked. You remember the, there is a time I was saying that um, you need to draw the attention of the priest as Hannah drew the attention of the priest. It doesn't matter how. Uh, there are people I have asked, what is your problem? Before they even mentioned that they had a problem. <laughs> Because the manner in which I saw them eh, appearing for prayer, for uh, you know, they, they appear even when there is no prayer, they come many times, they are seeking the Lord. Eh, I say there must be a problem because this is not how they normally behave. <laughs> so that if all of a sudden you have awoken, if all of a sudden you are diligent, if all of a sudden you want to do it all, then there must be something, there must be something. And suddenly, you realize that there is trouble with someone, that all of a sudden they are up. But when the Lord remembers them, they go back to default setting. Just the way they are. They are no longer available for anything. They can no longer even send themselves to prayer. Leave alone the one that is organized. They can no longer send themselves because now they are okay. But when in trouble, this, is, this was the behavior of Israel. When in trouble, they turn unto the Lord. They go doing their things normally, but when in trouble again, they turn unto the Lord. But the Lord is gracious. The Lord is gracious. And uh, he was found of them. But uh, this is not to say they did not incur losses. This is not to say it was without harm. It, it is not to say that they did not cry yeah, as a consequence of turning unto the Lord late. Because when you are turning unto the Lord late, he will be found, yes. But before he is found, the enemy will have dealt with you. Before he is found. Before he responds. So that you will have injuries of the enemy. But uh, the Lord is still gracious. And this is what the, the, he is saying. In those days, eh, he is also expressing what happens in those days when they have completely abandoned the Lord. And in those days, there was no peace to him that went out, nor to him that came in. So that there is no peace anywhere and everywhere. There is no peace anywhere and everywhere. Remember, um, when there is a state of a sort of emergency and there is a crisis, one of the advices that people are given is that stay at home, stay indoors, because it is perceived generally there will be peace there. But the Bible says here, during those times, there is no peace for the one that is going out, and there is no peace for the one that is coming in. Either way, there is trouble everywhere. 
Why? Why? But great vexation were upon all the inhabitants of the countries. Troubles, great troubles and tribulations were upon all the inhabitants of the countries. And uh, he saying that uh, and a nation was destroyed of a nation and a city of a city so that they are in destruction everywhere. A nation of a nation and a city of a city. Now listen to this. Listen to this because this I mentioned on Sunday. For God did vex them with all adversity. Meaning that God gave them into the hands of the adversary. The adversary, and remember I mentioned and I said that our adversary, our adversary at default setting is the enemy, who is the devil. And I told you, you don't want God for an enemy. If anything, do your best to ensure that God is not your enemy. Because when he is your enemy, you have nowhere to run to. At least when the devil is an enemy, you have God to run to. And when you run unto God, then you'll be safe. You'll be secure. The Bible says that the name of the Lord is a strong tower where the righteous run into and they are safe. But uh, where do you run when God is like uh, angered with you and when God is punishing you? Where do you run? Where would you go? There is nowhere to go and there is nowhere to run. And in this case he's saying that their nations were destroyed by other nations and their cities were destroyed by other cities. For God gave them in the hands of their adversity. But now in verse 7 he is telling this Asa that be strong therefore and let not your hands be weak for your work shall be rewarded. Now you, you ask yourself what is the relationship here between the work that Asa is doing and the trouble that Israel or Judah is going through. What is the relationship? And this prophet is telling him that be strong therefore and let not your hands be weak for your work shall be rewarded. Now, I have said there are two ways that you can please the Lord. Sometimes we like pleasing the Lord through things that do not cost us. Through ways that do not necessarily cost us. We would love to live a righteous and holy life. And that's good. You maintain a good relationship with the Lord. But if you do nothing for the Lord, then it means you can still anger the Lord. And here, the anger of the Lord is the one that was being like a met on them so that their nations and their cities are being destroyed. They are abandoned. Why? Because when you are not serving the Lord, then you are serving other gods. It's given, by the way. So that you do not say that uh, it's okay if I live a righteous life, a holy life and all that and do nothing in the kingdom of God. It's not okay. It's not okay. It's not okay. Why? Because even Joshua, if you read jo the book of Joshua chapter number 24, the, the, the Bible talks about the service. He is not just talking about the worship. He is talking about the service. Actually, uh, if you read uh, between the versions, you realize that uh, worship and service are used interchangeably depending on the version that you are reading of the Bible because worship must deliver some service unto God. If your worship is not delivering any service unto the Lord, then I would say with the words that we know so much, it is null and void. Eh? <laughs> it is of no consequence 
That's why Joshua say, is saying, Have a God or the God of the Amorites. Now, get me, is it um, Malachi? I think um, Malachi, in Malachi, there is a scripture we read just the other day that there is a difference between those who serve the Lord and those who do not serve the Lord. I believe it's either chapter, chapter 3. Chapter? Three, yeah, chapter three, chapter three, eighteen, chapter three, eighteen. There is a difference between those who serve and those who do not serve. Uh -huh. And you will again see the distinction, the difference between the righteous and the wicked, and between those who serve God and those who. And those who do not serve, <laughs> there is a difference. Don't just say that I'm okay, I'm not serving, I'm just okay, I'm living for the Lord. But there is no way of living for the Lord without serving Him. And no wonder this Asha is being told, don't weaken your hands. Don't weaken your hands. Because that is one way of making God to weaken His hands when he comes to bless you. The moment you start weakening your hands in service, then he also weakens his hands. He also weakens his hands. And this is like a load that is carried by two people. And uh, you, you, as you know, sometimes when you are carrying a load, uh, uh, you know, two of you, there is a way that you can allow much of the weight to be taken by your, uh, your counterpart or your colleague. And uh, you, you are just there. You are just there. Eh? And that's how many times we want that the Lord, God is calling, calling, or carrying, <laughs> carrying all the Lord so that we, we are just there relaxing. Uh, it's not heavy, we are saying, it's not heavy. We are holding it with our fingers. Let me tell you, God is not mocked. Galatians, the Bible says, is it chapter number 6, verse 1? It says, do not be mocked. God is God, uh, do not be deceived rather God is not mocked a man shall, re uh, shall reap what he, he so do not be deceived God cannot be mocked a man reaps what what he so why because if you let the Lord then God will let the Lord and wonder this prophet was clearly telling us it's upon you. It's upon you. So that after I am out of here, it's upon you. If you abandon God, he will also abandon you. Because he is telling them that the Lord is with you as long as you are with him. So ask your neighbor, are you with the Lord? <laughs> what did they say? Uh, they are not sure. <laughs> Tell them, now, if you are with the Lord, then he's with you. <laughs> so it, it will start the other way. Not, not the way we've been starting. We've been starting to ask, is the Lord with me? Are, are you with me? Is he on my side? Is he fighting my battles? Is he doing something on my behalf? Is he sorting my situation? You know, my condition is so severe that I need him. Is he with me? No, 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 no. The question is, are you with him? So, because as long as you're not with him, don't ask the question. You have your up, you have your answer. If you are not with him, then he is not with, with you. If you are not seeking him, then he will also abandon you. If you turn away from him, oh, he turned like yesterday. He is very good at responding. Because we serve a God that responds. If you turn away from him, I say, okay, you have gone. I have also gone. Make yourself busy. He also makes himself busy. No wonder he, he, he is telling this man that uh, this is a guarantee that after I have left in your service, do it diligently. Because as long as you are serving the Lord, you are in his kingdom. He is with you. As long as you are serving the Lord, 
in other words you are also seeking him he will be found and by you as long as you are, you are serving the lord and not weakening your hands the lord is also resolving all your crisis he's doing things in equal energy as you are serving him so if you are serving him with some weak hands then he is also like serving you with weak hands and you wonder what is the lord doing unto me and i don't know whether you've ever been frustrated having very high expectations but what you get out of those expectations is very little very little you have so high expectations but uh you realize it's a uh, it's very little very little that you get why because your actions were as much your service was as much susan if you like uh, you know let your hands be lazy and you are you know you are just there you are just there eh? you're just there just, just, that's just the way the lord is going to behave he's just there <laughs> he's just there so if you are waiting for him he is also waiting for you he is asking i'm waiting for you i'm waiting for you do something i do something not the other way you are telling god do something lord he is saying susan do something eh? tony you are saying do something lord i need so many things uh, and he is there he is saying me i am ready but i'm also waiting for you to do something and as soon as you do something then then and only then yeah i will respond and so many of us have weakened our hands because we thought that god does not respond or god does not see the way we are serving in fact one of the times that god appeared to solomon while he was building the temple because solomon had everything it takes because it was david that gathered all the resources that were required to build the lord's temple if you read uh, second samuel chapter number seven that's what he was saying what else can i do now that the lord has you know uh, uh, given me peace uh, he has given me rest uh, uh, in, uh, before all my enemies uh, and i'm in my house what can i do for the lord i will build him a house because the ark of the covenant was still living in the tent but god told him no 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 you you are too bloody your hands are so blooded so that i don't want you to do it but your son will do it however he was allowed to collect the, the, the resources so he collected everything that was necessary to build that temple so that when his son was coming to build his temple he had everything so that when god is appearing to solomon while doing uh, or the work of the temple he asked him how are you doing not what are you doing sometimes the question is not what you are doing no 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 not even the service that you are serving the lord no it is how are you serving the lord how are you doing it how are you doing it because how you are doing it will determine how the lord will do it he did not come to ask solomon what are you doing solomon yet he knew he was building the temple god knows whatever it is that you are doing in his kingdom but what he wants to ensure that he is sure that you are correct is in terms of how how are you doing it how you are doing it is very important because the measure the measure the measure so that the scripture in a is it uh, uh matthew chapter number six is it matthew six or there about the bible says uh, that for the measure that you measure others is the same way so that even for god the measure how you serve him is how he will attend to you how you seek him is how he will be found to you you abandon him he will abandon you you keep distance he will maintain distance there is a singer who sang a song which we used to sing quite a long uh, time ago that um, um if you call to him he will answer you if you run to him he will run to you and so uh, if you call to him he will answer if we run to him he will run to us if we what is the other one 
if we lift our hands, he will lift us up. Huh? And then, come praise his name, O oh, you ch <laughs> children of God, eh? O oh, you sons of God, who oh, sing for joy. Uh -huh. Our King, O oh, sing for joy to God. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Your strength, eh? <laughs> our strength, our strength. Because this thing I knew that whatever you do, God does in equal measure. So today, we must know that God is waiting. He's just waiting. You've been calling unto him, but he's saying, no, I have not seen any action. I have not seen any action. Have you ever dealt with people? Me, I've dealt with so many people that are telling me, I am only waiting for you to send the funds, then I will release your goods. Have you heard that before? Many times, many times I've been told, I've been told, I'm only waiting for you to, <laughs> and as soon as you send the funds, your goods will be released. Sometimes I'm not there, sometimes I'm not there, sometimes maybe I've sent someone, sometimes they are supposed to be delivered, and I'm told, as long as, or as soon as you send, then they will be, and uh, the more you delay, the more they are not. So sometimes you send, and if they are good, they will deliver. So God is waiting for you. Tell your neighbor, God is waiting for you. <laughs> Amen. Shall we rise up even as we pray in the presence of the Lord? Glory be to Jesus. Hallelujah. Just lift up your hands wherever you are in the presence of the Lord. And tell the Lord, tonight I want to be close to you. Tonight I want to be near you. Tonight I want to seek your face. Tonight I want to serve you with all my strength in the mighty name of Jesus. Come on, open up your mouth and tell the Lord, I need you, Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus. I want to be close to you. I don't want to be far from you. I want to be close in the name of Jesus. I want to seek your face every day in the name of Jesus. I want to serve you every day. I want you to do everything that, that I can do in your kingdom. So that, oh my Father, you may respond because you are a God that responds in the name of Jesus. And I pray, may the Lord respond, may the Lord respond in the name of Jesus in accordance to your action, how you are serving him, how you are doing things for him and his kingdom. May the Lord respond in the name of Jesus. Have you been diligent serving the Lord? The Lord is about to respond. Have you been diligent seeking his face? The Lord Lord is about to be found. Have you been diligent doing this and the other and seeking his face? He is about to show himself in the name of Jesus. Whatever you have been doing in his kingdom, he is about to respond. It's not in vain that we serve the Lord. There is a difference. There is a difference between those who serve the Lord and those who do not. There is a difference between those who do something and those who do nothing. There is a difference between those that are close to the Lord and those that are not close. There is a difference between those that are sluggish and those that are diligent. There is a difference. There is a difference in the mighty name of Jesus. And may the Lord respond unto you in the mighty name of Jesus. Whatever it is that you have been doing and maybe you are experiencing delay, may the Lord respond according to your actions, according to your diligence, according to what you have been doing in the name of Jesus. Because we serve the kind of God that responds in the name of Jesus. He is a faithful God. May he manifest his faithfulness unto us in Jesus' mighty name. Let everybody say amen. 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 God bless you and be with you in Jesus' mighty name. May the Lord uh, respond to every action in your life in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. And just before we say the grace, before we close, I want to invite Pastor Princess. Just, just say hello. Eh? I know you said hello the other day. <laughs> so <laughs> just, just come and say hello. And uh, it, it's, it's, good. it's good to honor the servants of the Lord. Just say hello to the people of God. 
Amen. 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 Praise the Lord, Church. Amen. It's good to be here this evening. I'm really blessed. Amen. I'm really challenged. Amen. 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 The word of God says that God will be what? The doers of what? Of his word. So I'll just charge you tonight, all of us, let us challenge God. Let us tuinuke, tufanyie mungu kazi, as we wait for him also to come and reveal himself or manifest himself even over our lives. Amen. God bless you so much. Uh, I'm here for just a few days, even before I go back home to let talk talk. Amen. The Lord bless you. The Lord do you good. Amen. Give a good round of applause in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. And pass our greetings. Eh? Can you pass your greetings to our greetings? <laughs> Amen. Pass our greetings to Pastor Jeff. Eh? Uh, she's the wife to Pastor Jeff. And uh, we thank God for her in the name of Jesus. Um, just before we say the grace, let me mention that uh, we've been having our, our sisters and our, our brothers at Wakiharas, we call them Wakiharas, eh? who lost their, their brother Saimo. And um, uh, people have been gathering there, the committee has been going on. And uh, on Sunday, we had a service there. And uh, on uh, at least Monday, I went also. Um, and I believe uh, they are concluding tomorrow so that the burial will be held on a Friday. It's somewhere at Kibichoy. Yeah? So, um, it's, it's close, it's close, it's not that far. So it's good for us to organize ourselves. And uh, indeed, by the way, we are the ones um, uh, that are conducting that ceremony because they, they don't have any other church. This is their church. So I, I encourage you to join us as we do that service there and uh, find the ways and means of how people are traveling and going there. I believe the Lord is going to bless you. Equally, I encourage you, now that uh, today we didn't um, uh, make it to go there, perhaps there are some people who made it to go there. Um, I encourage you tomorrow, at least, George, eh? tomorrow, all of us, all of us, and pass the word. We, we are going to indicate that in the group um, so that uh, all of us are found there. It's the last day of those Maumbolezi and therefore I encourage all of us to be there so that we can hold a last service there before the burial on Friday as we even get further details on the logistics and how we are going to get there and I believe that the Lord will bless us because uh, we are encouraged by the world to mourn with those that are mourning and uh, even if you don't owe them anything even if you do not know them yeah, just, just be there, just be there, and the Lord will reward you in Jesus' mighty name. We've just read with you that uh, be strong and continue serving the Lord and do not weaken your hands, for your service will be rewarded. Even you, Mary, your service will be rewarded even if you didn't give me water today. Eh? <laughs> May your past service be rewarded. But today... <laughs> <laughs> amen, amen. May the Lord bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. May the Lord bless you tonight. May he shine his face upon you. May he manifest his glory upon you. And reveal himself unto you in Jesus' mighty name. May the grace and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with all of us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and i shall dwell in the house of the lord forever and ever amen have a glorious blessed night in jesus name amen